Um, I got a call late last night. My wife has passed away. And yeah, and it was uh, it was self-induced, and it was uh, up in North Carolina. And um, we're gonna have a funeral for her next Sunday here at 3 p.m. Now, when I first saw this, I, I I wanted to say I'm gonna give the pastor the benefit of the doubt. But then when I watched the video two or three times and I used my investigative skills from back when I was a cop, something smelled fishy. Now I'm not saying he did anything, but all I'm saying is when I look at two plus two, it's equal to four to me. The way he went about describing this to the congregation after he made the decision to do a whole sermon and the way that they just immediately had a funeral service set up, and I'm just saying. Video is brought to you by TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com. Get the merch link in the description section. This is back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the number one sticker seller. So we put it back on the shirt. So get one. Link will pop up. Y'all already know what to do. Like and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, and ladies. I've been on this rant talking about pastors in the modern church. And, and I'm just disgruntled. Like, I, I ain't going to lie. Like, I'm burnt out of the modern church. The modern church is, it, 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 it didn't one off into something else. These, these are influencers who take the pulpit, go to cemetery school, and I'm saying cemetery school. I know what, it's, I know what sem seminary school is. I call it cemetery school. They go to cemetery school, and they're looking for a job and an opportunity. And the opportunity says, be a pastor. You make $50,000 a year, glass ceiling, on, on the glass ceiling app. You go and you do that, and you start a church, and you perform. And you look at ways to, 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 to water down stuff to get more and more people. And then you got a big crowd and then you're a celebrity pastor and you sell DVDs and you, you know, and you drive a Rolls Royce to church. And, and, and this, not every preacher, your preacher is doing it right. The, the, your, your neighbor, they preach bad. But this is what has come to the church. And therefore, you see situations like this popping up. And so I got an article and I, this is just a video I'm going to play here in a second. But I got an article that I want to kind of read through with you guys because there's a lot of context here that I think may not be spoken for. But I'm going to try to speak for it. That's why y'all came here. So you don't have to do all this research. I'll do it for you. So let's get to the news article here. It's News Nation has an article that we found, and it's talking about this particular situation. Of course, the pastor got up and told the congregation about his wife's uh, suicide. He, he said it was a suicide. He said it was self-inflicted. It happened in North Carolina, which is in a, in, in a, in a state north of where he lives, because he lives in South Carolina in Myrtle Beach. And... But the family is saying, wait a minute, y'all need to look into this. They don't believe that she actually killed herself in North Carolina. Now, he's claiming that she had mental health issues. That could be the case. Maybe she maybe she didn't. Uh, women are crazy. Unless y'all, y'all may not believe that, but women are crazy. Um, but this way, this woman may not have been crazy. Um, and the way he went about doing it, and I'm going to show the video that, that shows that, but she uh, filed multiple times for a legal separation from this gentleman. Uh, she actually filed and, and received, she, well, she filed for divorce in October of 2023. On her social media, she posted a video that alluded to abuse. This is her, and this is the video that she posted about and abuse. Well, and um, life's been kind of crazy. A couple past weeks, months, uh, years, but um, I've kind of had to keep my circle really small for the past couple weeks, just because um, I'm going through a lot and it's hard and it's my cross to bear. It's the thing that God has put in my life to deal with and I don't want to bring a lot of people into it. I'm so thankful to God for a strong family and the friends that God has put in my life to be there for me at this time. Um, I just wanted to share that my, my heart and my prayer is that the church would stay strong, that y'all would stick together because the church is God's people. It's not a man, it's not a person, it's not me, it's God's people, the bride of Christ. And um, it's a lot of really good, good people in, in the church that. Um, see, see, the, I'm going to let her finish, but 
this kind of speech, and I'm gonna let her finish because that'll give me a, a better diagnosis in totality. But this kind of speech is things that people do when they're suicidal, and when they're they're like this gloom and doom end of the world perception, where thinking about and imagining a life where these people don't have her in it, right? I hope the church continue to do things. It could be divorce, but it also people are thinking in their mind, I'm going to be out of here and I hope that y'all do well and things of that nature. Let me let her finish. Run your race. Stay encouraged. Stay in your word. Keep worshiping. Like, I, I, I can't wait to worship again <laughs> with everybody. But um, you, you catch that? to God and um, to God and um, I don't think God would be pleased with me if I just jumped right into um, missions and women's events and creative directing and worship leading and stuff I think when your world is shook up you need to take a pause and I can only pray that more people will take a pause and get, I'm trying to get my priorities straight right now. Um, and that's making sure that my heart doesn't have any unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, just forgiveness and hope for the future and peace. Because you can't put a price on peace from God. So thank you for all your prayers and support know that i have to keep my circle really really small right now i'm used to having a really big circle so it's hard because i want to reach out to everybody and tell you how much i love you and i miss you but this is the best way that i know how so i love you all i miss you thank you for your love and support over the last couple years and uh some of you you know up to 18 years walking with me as my friends and for right now, I've just had to put everything on pause to get myself right. And I think God's happy with that. So keep praying for me. Thank you. And uh, I love you. I'll be praying for you. Now, I don't know the 100% context of this. You know, it looked like maybe they separated. She hadn't been in church or she hadn't been active in the church for whatever reason. That could very well be the case. But you get a little bit of a sentiment of, of how she feel, the things that she's saying. It, it's kind of it's kind of gloom and doom. I'm not going to lie. And and people love putting stuff on social media to blast their spouse. So I'm not trying to act like this is somehow. Um, I've had a lot of women that have reached out to me about um, situations of abuse. And I just wanna tell you what a lot of people have told me uh, lately and reminded me because I think I forgot. I knew, but I for I pushed it in the back of my head um, just because of my situation. Um, but you are the bride of Christ. Before anybody else's bride, male or female, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what what uh, gender you are, abuse is abuse. And you are the bride of Christ. And my Bible says that he took all the abuse you could think of for you so that you didn't have to live that life of slavery. God hates divorce, but why? According to everybody I've asked and the, the scriptures that I've found, it's because it hurts people. But does abuse hurt people? How do you think God feels about that? So I want to remind you, like a bunch of people have been reminding me lately, that I'm God's pride first. So she's pretty much saying she's getting abused. I mean, if, if, if you can't read between the lines on that, my man, you need to put your glasses on. You, you must be, you must be uh, hanging out too much with Stevie Wonder. If you can't see that she's saying that she's been abused. So she's making these abuse allegations. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. Women do this a lot and it'd be a, a complete lie. And there are women that do this that are actually crying out. I don't know which woman this is. Right. I cannot make a judgment call. I don't know. The, the way he did his sermon made me think he, he is 
probably on the other side of, of wrong. I mean, he's probably on the side of wrong. And with that couple, with her death and the stuff that she's saying now makes me feel like she may actually be a victim of abuse. I'm not saying she is because I really don't know. They have to do an investigation. I'm not privy to all the information. However, women do do this stuff and claim that men are abusive. It, it, it's, I tell you what, it happens so much so that it becomes old. Anytime a woman breaks up with a man, they say he's abusive. It's interesting because they never say what kind of abuse. And when you confront them or ask them about the abuse, they know what they can say and what they can't. And it's almost like a blanket statement like racism. They know that they don't have no evidence of physical abuse. And, and so they'll go, oh, it was emotional. Abuse. He was emotionally abusive. Therefore, you can never prove that. You can never improve that. And anyway, let, let's move on. So you go down, the family is questioning, so that the, the uh, sheriff's department actually did open an investigation. I think it's down here somewhere, where they opened an investigation into this incident. Now, I don't know what the results are going to be. I think that it's crazy that a pastor would say what he said, but I'm going to open up this link so you guys can see exactly what he said. So you see why the, if you can determine if the outrage is necessary or not. We're not going to do an altar call today. Instead, um, instead, um, I'm going to have you stand up, and I'm going to make an announcement. And um, after the announcement, I'm going to ask that you um, you leave church quietly and, and don't talk about the announcement here in the building, please, if you can. So y'all can stand to your feet. Um, before I make the announcement, I also want to say that um, my request to you is that you will continue to come to church and serve and give um, for the next, you know, little bit, because I don't want to have, I'm taking a little bit of a break, and I don't want to have to worry about the church. My break may be a few days, a few weeks, I don't know. Um, I got a call late last night. My wife has passed away. And yeah, and it was uh, it was self-induced, and it was uh, up in North Carolina. And um, we're going to have a funeral for her next Sunday here at 3 p.m. And so, um, it's, it's all I can, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of going on um, adrenaline right now. So, y'all pray for me and my kids and everybody. And uh, she was, she wasn't, y'all knew that she wasn't well mentally and that uh, she needed her medicine that was hard to get to her. And so um, I'm sure there'll be more details to come, but um, just keep our family in your prayers. And I'm going to let Pastor Randall, my bishop, uh, he can pray. I get a microphone, he'll pray out. And if you have anything you want to share as well, uh, I appreciate it. Now, this guy doesn't sound like a grieving man to me. I, I just, I mean, maybe they hate each other. You know, there's some people that if they passed away, I probably wouldn't shed a tear. I, 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 you know, I feel bad for other people, but I wouldn't care. Um, but I get it. This person may not have been in a good relationship, so when a person dies, it could be mixed emotions. Maybe trying to hold it together for the church. But that's it. This stuff just don't sound right to me. It just don't sound right that a person would preach an entire sermon and don't do altar call. Like out of the whole thing. So what was the purpose of the sermon? If you, if your, if I found out that. I, I, just say he cared about her. If I found out it's somebody I cared about, we could have been at odds, but I care about you. And I found out that they died. I think I, I think I would be very affected by that. And if I make the decision to say I'm going to preach anyway, that means that I'm going to decide to put God's business over my own emotions. And you preach the gospel to do an altar call. That's what this is all about. You preach the gospel and then you make it available for people who want to respond to the gospel. So if you're going to preach the gospel or you're going to preach the Bible, do the sermon in spite of what has happened, you might as well do the altar call because that's the point of you preaching in the first place. You forego the altar call to then kind of in a roundabout way tell your congregation a, a, a half story about stuff and then say, I'm going to take a day off, a week off, a I just don't know what to think about this. Now, I know everybody deals with grief in a different way. I just don't think that that would be a normal response from somebody. And I think that people should investigate because did he go down there and kill her, right? He went down there and killed her, came back to preach on a Sunday. That's why he running on adrenaline. I don't know. We're going to find out. But if I had to roll the dice, I would imagine that this dude is got something to do with it. But I don't know. He may be innocent. Women be lying. They get on social media and they bash their significant others. They To be a victim, they claim they were abused by somebody in order to, 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 to shift the, 
the control into their hands. Because a man can't just say, I'm abused. Ain't nobody, like, you got abused. She hit you? <laughs> what a weenie. A woman can use that abuse word and go all the way with it. And if anything happened, they, they on the side of right, he on the side of wrong. And, and, and if somebody is mentally ill and she, just, she wants to ruin his life, she makes all these accusations that he's abusive, kill herself so nobody can talk to her about it. No evidence or nothing. The church is now grieving over it. Nobody knows. Everybody's questioning everything. And it's going to ruin the man's life and his professional life as a preacher. Let me add this. I should have said it at the beginning of the video. This is why the modern church is so wonky to me. If a man is preaching and he is actively in a separation or divorce, that man needs to step down as a preacher. Allow another pastor to preach while he deal with his family issues. A pastor should not be preaching and going through a divorce at the same time. Your focus need to be on your family. You got to step down, my man. If your kids are high on drugs, you need to go deal with your family first. God, God can use anybody. You got three pastors on staff. Let one of them lead the church while you deal with your family issues. I don't know how we don't get that as a church and as a people and as a body. You got to step down, brother. You got people's lives hanging in the balance and you are openly having a divorce with your wife. And the Bible says that you cannot divorce unless it's unless a person dies or adultery. So you can't just divorce this woman unless one of those things have happened. Now, of course, we all know that abuse is uh, I need to go back and read the Bible. I think in theory, abuse would be just as bad as adultery. And that could be a reason to leave a, a person if they're beating you. Um you know, so I, I don't know what the Bible say about it. If I had to guess, I'd say I think the spirit of what God is saying is that if somebody's beating you and it's unreconcilable, not I mean, I say irreconcilable, meaning somebody's beating you and they're going to kill you. You can't reconcile that. If somebody cheats on you, it is normal to not reconcile that. If somebody dies, you can't bring them back to life just to remarry them. So those are ways in which I would argue that, you know, um, God would be okay with a, a divorce. And if God ain't okay with you divorcing a person, then pray for your pray to ask for forgiveness of man beating on you. I just can't imagine God being like, you should have just stayed there and let him kill you. I, I don't I don't really think that's a thing. I I I ain't I ain't proving it in the scriptures either. So take it as you may. But step down, brother. You you, you gotta figure it out. You don't need the church to be distracted by this. The body of Christ should be moving and you should be dealing with it. Let people pray for you, lay hands on you. Anyway, I could talk for two hours about this subject. Tell me what you think. You think he did it? And it's just a it's just a hypothesis. We don't know who did it or not. We don't know what happened. She could be back crap crazy. That's why he wasn't with her. And she went and offed herself just the way he said it. And he was had his hand, he washed his hands with her because she was doing so much crazy stuff, accusing him of abuse. Or this dude is a crazy he gonna be on a dateline special. I'll see y'all on the next one. I'm out.